رساله تحقق التدريب وتعطوا لترشيح عماد ميشيل عون المعارضه السوريه هي بتحدد من يمثلها Good afternoon on this January 31st. I'm Yumna Nofa. You're watching the English newscast on Future Television, and these are today's top stories. Clashes renewed overnight between extremist groups, Nusra Front and Daesh, on the outskirts of the northeastern border town of Arsil. Mary Knight Patriarch Shadadai welcomes the reconciliation between the Free Patriotic Movement and the Lebanese forces, saying there is no reason to delay the presidential elections. At least 45 people killed, 110 wounded by a car bomb and two suicide bombers in Syria as the Geneva peace talks begin with trouble in sight. Good afternoon to all our viewers tuning in. We begin today with clashes that have renewed overnight between extremist groups and Nusra Front as well as Daesh on the outskirts of the northeastern border town of Arsel as well as the Zamrani crossing in the outskirts of Al-Jarajir in Kalamun. Now, Daesh has launched an attack at an Al-Malahi area in a bid to control the last bastion of Al-Nusra. Violent confrontations took place and heavy weapons were used in areas close to the encampments of Syrian refugees who supplied Al-Nusra with additional fighters to face Daesh. Clashes had erupted between the two groups recently, but military sources have downplayed their threat on Lebanon, saying the clashes were over positions in the area. Some reports say that the clashes are an attempt by Daesh to create an emirate that extends from the eastern Bakar region to the sea. The violent fighting left several militants dead and wounded from both sides. Maronite Patriarch Shadarai is welcoming the reconciliation between the Free Patriotic Movement and the Lebanese forces, saying that now that there has been an accord, there is no reason to delay the presidential elections. This comes after, on January 19th, the leader of the Lebanese Forces Party, Samir Raja, announced his support for the candidacy of president to the head of the parliamentary bloc of the Change and Reform Party, Michel Aoun. Shara Rai said, there is no reason after the announcement of all applications and the meetings devoted to the presidential elections that they don't take place according to democratic rules, the constitution, and the National Pact after 20 months of vacancy at the head of the post. I said this in his Sunday sermon in Pkirke. At least 45 people were killed, 110 wounded by a car bomb and two suicide bombers in the Sayyida Zainab district of Damascus, where Syria's holiest Shia shrine is located. State television footage showed burning buildings and wrecked cars in the neighborhood. Two suicide bombers then blew themselves up nearby as people were being rescued. The heavily populated area in the south of the city is a site of pilgrimage for Shias from Iran, Lebanon and other parts of the Muslim world. The explosions occurred as representatives of Syria's government and its divided opposition began convening in Geneva for the first UN-mediated peace talks in two years. The United Nations has said it is aiming for six months of talks, first seeking a ceasefire and later working toward a political settlement for Syria. This nearly five-year conflict has killed more than 250,000 people, driven more than 10 million from their homes and drawn in global and regional powers. So we move on to Geneva, where the delegation from Syria's main opposition group has arrived for peace talks on a war that has killed, as we said, 250,000 people. The delegation arrived to join the UN-mediated peace talks, demanding President Bashar al-Assad's government be made to comply with the UN resolution on humanitarian aid and human rights. The 17-strong team from the Saudi-backed Higher Negotiation Committee also known as the HNC, including political and militant opponents of Assad in the country's five-year-old civil war, is expected to have a first meeting with the UN mediator Stefan Di Mistura, setting up the first peace talks in two years. This was not a precondition for talks, they said, but it was the duty of the Security Council members who agreed on the resolution last month, including Syria's chief ally Russia, which is supporting Assad's forces with a bombing campaign. Coming up next, the screen 
Actors Guild Awards, known as the SAGs, are handed out, and the cast of the journalism movie Spotlight win the top prize. We've got all the highlights when we return. Welcome back. You're watching the 1620 o'clock news here on Future Television. Supporters of Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton said they stand by her despite the U.S. State Department's decision to withhold seven email chains from Clinton's time as Secretary of State, a move that rivals say proves she cannot be trusted. Crowds gathered at the Iowa State University's College of Engineering building to hear Clinton speak, joined by her daughter Chelsea, former Arizona Congresswoman Gabby Giffords, and NASA astronaut Mark Kelly. Some supporters say the email controversy may have put a ding in her reputation, but say she is still the best candidate for the presidency. The U.S. State Department conceded for the first time that intelligence officials were correct to say that at least 22 emails sent through Hillary Clinton's private service contained some of the government's most secretive secrets. For the first nominating contest in the U.S. presidential elections just days away, Democratic hopeful Bernie Sanders told an audience at a large rally in Iowa that his campaign was not just about electing the next president. Sanders' chief rival Hillary Clinton holds a slight edge over Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont, 45 percent to 42. On Monday, Iowans will gather in homes, gymnasiums, libraries, taverns and even grain elevators for caucuses to select their favorite for the Democratic and Republican presidential nominations. What this campaign is about is something that is very, very serious business. And what it is about is not just electing a president of the United States, as important as that is. It is about a political revolution and transforming America. Two thousand and one hundred pregnant Colombian women are infected with the mosquito-borne Zika virus, the country's National Health Institute says, as the disease continues its spread across the Americas. The virus has been linked to the devastating birth defect, microphily, which prevents the fetal brain from developing properly. There is no vaccine or treatment, but there are over 20,000 confirmed cases of the disease in Colombia according to the National Health Institute in an epidemiology bulletin study. Among them are about 2,100 pregnant women. The government is urging women to delay pregnancy for six to eight months to avoid potential infection. Officials expect up to 700,000 cases. Brazil is the country hit hardest by the disease. It has reported around 3,700 cases of microphily, strongly suspected to be related to Zika. The World Health Organization, also known as WHO, has said as many as 4 million people in the Americas may become infected in the next year. So it's the countdown to Oscar Day, which happens on February 27th in California. And the Screen Actors Guild Awards were handed out, and the cast of the investigative journalism movie Spotlight won the top prize for Best Ensemble Performance in a Motion Picture. The movie stars Mark Ruffalo, Rachel McAdams, as well as Michael Keaton, who accept the award on behalf of the cast. We can see stars winning as we speak. Leonardo DiCaprio was named Best Actor for playing the fur trapper in a pioneer-era retribution drama, The Revenant. Brie Larson played a woman held hostage with a young son in room, and she was named Best Actress. While Sweden's Alicia Vikander won Best Supporting Actress for playing the wife of transgender artist Lily Elby in The Danish Girl. Idris Elba won two SAG awards, Best Supporting Actor for playing a mercenary commander in Netflix's West African war drama Beasts of No Nation, and Best Actor in the limited series for BBC's crime drama Luther. The SAGs are considered a reliable prognosticator for February's Oscars, as actors make up the majority of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences voters. Here are the highlights. Right now. Like this. <laughs> I'm just like, I can't really believe what's happening. I'm to be up there and to get uh, awarded from my colleagues and my friends and peers uh, is pretty just remarkable. I, I don't know, I, I grew up in Sweden and I've been looking up. I've always thought it was such a wonderful thing that America has a, an award for their union and for their actors uh, amongst themselves. And so, no, I'm just, <laughs> just 
so grateful, so happy. It's been a crazy year for you. I mean, you're really just everyone. Everyone knows you. Well, this one's a big one. This one means a lot because this comes from where it all began, in my opinion. I mean, this comes from my fellow actors, the people who were here before me. Um, and who inspired me. So I feel like this is a bit of a graduation. I feel like I'm inducted. I've been a SAG card holder for 20 years now. Um, and I just had the moment as I was walking down the stage holding this, I was like, I think I'm a working actor now. <laughs> I really, I feel it. I've never really felt that before, but I, in this moment, I feel it. The very oh, production yeah, of The Odd Couple. <laughs> 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 All right, let's do it. All right, where are the no, other in a bar? Everybody, everybody, sit ahead. I swear to God. Right here. Where? I also think that the, the, one of the reasons why that, that we may be standing here as an ensemble is because I think we all felt uh, very responsible walking in to represent the people that we were playing and do the best we could. So that's a, that's a, big, uh, a big challenge and, and uh, a, a, a goal that we all wanted to achieve individually. And I think that kind of gave us, uh, we were all on the same page doing that going in. We all had the, the, the same task. Make sure that we get these people and honor them right. And we were supported by them. I mean, they, they, they really did open their lives, open their, their work, open, open their work ethic, open, you know, their, their personal experience. They, they, they just opened their lives to us. My uh, Michael Keaton's legs. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's like a horror movie. <laughs> Michael and Why we didn't put that in the film? <laughs> I want to know. But I just have so much respect for this art form. I really do. And, and as I said, I, I feel like we stand on the shoulders of giants any young actor that I speak to when they ask me, you know, you know, what my career was like, how, how I started, it was by watching movies. It was by watching what has been accomplished in our past. And I'm, I'm, uh, I've always, you know, it's a, a thirst that's never quenched. Once you see a great film and a great performance, they're always striving to get somewhere close to what you remembered as a child. And so this coming from my fellow actors, it, it, it means, it means a great deal. It really means a great deal to me. Marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our headlines. Clashes have renewed overnight between extremist groups in Nusra Front and Daesh on the outskirts of the northeastern border town of Adsid. Maronite Patriarch Shadadai welcomes the reconciliation between the Free Patriotic Movement and the Lebanese forces saying there is no reason to delay the presidential election. And at least 45 people killed, 110 wounded in Syria by a car bomb and two suicide bombers as the Geneva peace talks kick out with trouble. Those wrap up your Sunday headlines live on Future Television. Catch us again tomorrow for all the latest. Have a good one.